No time to waste guys. Today we talk about the most disappointing car you can buy in 2023. Not the used ones but the brand new model with 2023 in front. And don't worry, even if you're a fan of this brand, because this car is just a happy accident, they usually make awesome cars. Just not this one. Without further ado, the car I wouldn't suggest unless you're rolling in dough is the Mazda MX-30 EV. Yes, I had to add EV next to it because MX-30 has three different configurations. Full electric, plug-in hybrid, and mild hybrid. And it is the full electric one that is the most disappointing. And you know what's really telling? Mazda is pulling the plug on it in the US this year. Even though it only hit the scene two years ago. Yup, they're dropping it like a hot potato. So if you're one of the thousand Canadians or 400 Americans who snagged one, I hope you had some extra cash to spare. As a Mazda owner and a fan, it's sad to see this thing struggle because it was a meaningful launch for them. It is their first fully electric vehicle and they're trying to bring back the iconic Wankel engine in the plug-in hybrid model. I gotta give props to Mazda for taking on this challenge. And I agree that MX-30 was the best place to try this thing out. On a smaller car where the motor does most of the heavy lifting. Maximizing the pros and minimizing the cons. I won't go too deep since we don't even have this thing here in NA, but to break it down, Wankel engine has a rotating center shaft called an eccentric shaft that spins the rotor. As the rotor spins, the intake, compression, ignition, and exhaust happens naturally, giving you more power for less weight. However, due to its design, the engine has incomplete and inefficient combustion resulting in high fuel consumption and poor emission. Sealing is also a challenge. Engineering Explained explains this very well, but essentially, deformation occurs due to the temperature difference between the intake and the exhaust chamber. To compensate this, engine oil is applied directly into the chamber, which ends up getting burned as well. So, you gotta be on top of that oil level. I guess this is a bonus because it forces you to do your own engine oil change, training you to be the DIY mechanic or mechanics ATM. Anyhow, aside from sealing and engine oil burning issues, concerns about poor fuel economy and emissions are offset by the fact that the engine is used as a generator rather than the main driver. And as a small size generator, it does a great job extending the 53 miles of electric range to a combined mileage of 400. But unfortunately, this wasn't good enough. As a new player in the EV game, I don't think they had the technologies to keep up with the big players. This becomes more apparent when we take a closer look at the EV one. But the motor and the other EV components don't really have that wow factor. Making MX-30 or EV more so on an average spec vehicle, even with the upgraded Wankel engine. And folks, you were probably expecting a powerhouse like the RX-8 when you heard that Mazda is bringing back the Wankel engine. So discovering that it's only 168 horses might have been a downer like this kid who got an iPad as a gift. But hey, it doesn't change the fact that REV is still the cream of the crop when it comes to MX-30. Kid, you got potential. I know I've gone off here, but I really think this unique system deserves more attention. Now, let's refocus on the main topic. Why 2023 MX-30 EV is the least impressive car of the year. The reason is simple. It significantly underperforms, with specs that fall well below the average. In fact, it's even less impressive than the 2022 Toyota Corolla with its decade-old 1.8 liter engine which managed to be more competitive than this brand new EV. To be fair, I won't compare it to bigger and more expensive cars like Tesla Model X or Lucid Air. Instead, I'll be comparing it to other subcompact ESUVs. 143 horsepower with 8.7 0 to 60, 100 miles of AER, and a charging speed of 6.6 .6 kilowatt and 40 kilowatt. They are all below average, especially the 100 miles of AER is quite sad. 
And to make things worse, it's priced the same as its competitors. Talk about not cutting corners. Sure, there are some good things about this car, such as Mazda's well-balanced chassis, providing awesome handling, sleek modern design thanks to their code of philosophy, and Mazda's first freestyle doors giving it a unique look and welcoming feel, just like their code of philosophy states. Plus, the great luxury leg interior will catch anyone's attention. Especially with the eco-friendly materials in the cabin like cork trim on the center console. But when the base specs fall this far behind, fancy cover-ups won't be convincing me. And just to put it into perspective, these EVs are among the smallest and cheapest ones out there, with some of the weakest specs. Making 2023 Mazda MX-30 one of the worst EVs on the market if not the worst. I mean seriously, only a 100 mile range on a full charge? I don't know if that's enough in Europe or in Japan. I would be barely making to Niagara Falls from my place. Or maybe I won't even make it to Niagara Falls because I was blasting music with its amazing Bose sound system with AC turned on. Stopping by at a charging station for a half an hour to go little more than an hour. And yes, that's with quick DC charging. That's ridiculous. And trust me, a lot of people travel way further during summer here. I'm not dropping 40 to 50k even as a secondary vehicle with such a short range. Not worth it. Today we talked about one of the worst cars you can buy in the year 2023 brand new. Although I did say it is the worst, it still drives, feels, and looks like Mazda. Which is a good thing. Once they step up their game, I think they will do well in the upcoming EV era. Anyhow, as always, thank you for tuning in and watching my videos. Kurao, annyeong.